how can the second largest cinema chain in Malaysia have such a confusing checkout experience? It needs to be fixed. Today, I'm going to challenge myself to improve this experience in under one hour. The goal for me is to redesign a smooth checkout experience so that the users can check out within 10 seconds. Even though I've bought movie tickets on this site many times, I still don't understand this interface. It's unnecessarily complicated. <laughs> for one, the timer. If I scroll further, this time left would be hidden behind that header and I can't see it anymore. When I'm selecting my seats, this takes up the entire of my attention, so don't expect the users to go up and down to check what seats have they selected. You see, going from step 1 to step 2, it looks straightforward. But after I select seats and click on continue, I'm actually led to this page. And when I click on this continue button, I would think that it's going to charge me right away. But no, I feel like this page should be a step in itself because you're actually reviewing the seats that you have selected and choosing the rewards. I selected two seats, right? So it shows me two. And because the plus icon is not disabled, I would think that I can click further. When I try to click it, it just says, no, you can't do that. This should be communicated clearly to the user. Like maybe it's grayed out or something. Let's not even talk about how these things are not aligned. <laughs> I was even more confused when I looked at this. Like, what is this? Do I pay 16 bucks extra if I chose this? But actually, it's a 5 bucks discount from your original ticket. This one is actually redeeming free tickets. Many people would have missed the promotion. Which makes me wonder, is this dark UX? There are also a bunch of problems with this interface, like the font sizing, the grid system. These menu items could take up the entire width of the screen. If I click on this tiny arrow here, I actually see this page. Very weird. Because suddenly I'm being reminded of the movie that I'm watching, which wasn't brought up to me in the seat selection page. I click on continue, I'll pay. There are different font sizes, different capitalization of text, different font colors, text being clipped off by buttons, different button UI. Some things are red, but I can't click on it. I can't go back. If I want to go back, I need to click on my browser. In the entire checkout experience, the most important problem to fix is this page. Now, let's kickstart the redesign. A portion of this video is sponsored by Mobin. Everyone starts a project differently. There's really no set rule here. For me, it's about writing down everything that I need to know or need to remind myself. Then I looked up Mobin for some design inspirations. Mobin allows you to search for any screenshot that is in their database. So I could search for things like buy tickets, movie tickets, or anything along those lines to look for inspiration. In this case, I filter by checkout screens. I also looked for progress indicator inspiration. The one that they have currently takes up a lot of cognitive load. So I wanted to improve that. I thought to myself, what if it's a fixed header on the top and it only shows me the step that I'm currently in. After tinkering with many different layouts, I decided to go with this one. After a user select their seats, they are required to select the types of their tickets. But there is no way for a user to double check the movie that they're watching, the seats, the location and the time. So I want to include that information in this step. At the same time, I'm designing the footer of the page and experimented with different copy and layouts for the timer. Honestly, this seat selection view could be improved, but I don't really have much time to work on that right now, so I'm just going to screen cap and just paste it here. The next important thing that we should pay attention to is the showtime selection. As a moviegoer, I find myself shuffling between different movie show times just to find the time that has the best seats. One of the challenge is how do I inform users that a movie screening at 12am happens the next day? And how do other products instill a sense of urgency in their customers? Upon searching, I found this app, Swiggy. It has this minimal, elegant, sold-out chip that I really like. So after testing out different layouts and form weights, I decided to go with a bright red text that doesn't stand out too much. Another challenge I face is to design the buttons in a way that users obviously know which showtime is being selected. As for the showtimes that are not being selected, it should fade out. 
but also not look disabled. When displaying icons on small screens, it's important to zoom out to see if it still looks good. In this case, the icon looks too complicated, so I removed the three lines and changed this to a star with solid fill. I also added a subtle red gradient at the header to spice things up. Since every cinema has different seating layouts, it's important to guide users that they can pinch and zoom to navigate this page. I added a subtle pinch to zoom animation using the Lollifiles plugin on Figma. This little toast gently moves up from the bottom of the screen, and then once the user tries to pinch to zoom, I want the toast to disappear. Now, on to the biggest challenge throughout this redesign. After choosing seats, the user needs to inform if they're paying for adults, kids, senior citizens, or disabled people, because the ticket prices may vary. I have no idea what to do. After scrolling further on Mobin, the Tesla app inspired me to design a stepper that looks like this. Just three simple, elegant, but huge steppers. I want it to look simple and easy to use so that the user can move on to the next step quickly. It is best practice to also show a breakdown of what the user is paying for. To find inspiration for this design pattern, I searched for a checkout on Mobin. I also tested out the real movie checkout experiences to see what content should go here. The next step is to design a rewards step. This is where the users can redeem any member discounts or apply voucher codes. I chose to have this as a dedicated page instead of having everything in one page, just so that I won't overwhelm the user. I tried several layouts and copy to see which one is clearer and design different states to visualize the experience better. Four hours have passed, and this is the result. Please share how do you think we could improve this design further so that everyone can learn together. I stay in Malaysia and there are a lot of apps where I can't access in my home country. So I'll just use Mobin to look for app design inspirations. If I were to research on a fintech product, I could just filter by app categories like finance and I'll get access to all these finance apps in one click of a button. Mobin has over 100,000 fully searchable screenshots. They're constantly updated so that you can keep up with the latest trends. So if you're interested, try Mobin for free today using this link. I feel like every product designer should have Mobin in their tool belt. And let me know in the comments below what you think about this redesign. What did you like and what did you not like about it? If you enjoyed this redesign series, feel free to check out this previous videos and also my other playlists where you can binge watch each of them. I'll see you in that video. Bye.